got to have some preaching. Let the church say hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I want to present our preacher. He needs no introduction here at Fellowship, neither in the city of Chicago. Dr. E.V. Hill is pastor of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles, California. He'll be preaching for us with us at New Covenant all of this week, and we certainly invite you to come and share with us. But let's put our hands together as we praise God for the word and Dr. E.V. Hill. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bless you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, give us these words and give us a word to take home with so that we may live. For in thee we live, we move, and we have our being. Amen. I want to say to my pastor, Pastor Evans of this great fellowship, thank you for letting me come back again. I've been coming this way a long time, and he's getting better and better. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Thurston, whom uh, I uh, preached for Dr. Elijah Thurston. And then I preached for John Thurston. And I'm here with Steve Thurston. And when he's gone, I'm going to preach for his son. <laughs> Praise God. May God bless you and keep you. Thank you for your prayers. It's good to be back in fellowship. There's no fellowship quite like fellowship. May God bless you. My wife wasn't able to come. She's been ill for several weeks. But I'm married now. I, I ain't hunting for nothing. I'm married. God be praised. Yes. Philippians, the second chapter. The second chapter of Paul's letter to Philippi. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but have made of himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Jesus is our hero. A lot of people are confused across the country and they have misplaced their trust. They have put their trust in men. They have put their trust in stuff. They have put their trust in things. They have put their trust in careers. They have put their trust in husband and wife. They have put their trust in children. They have put their trust in a job. But we need to focus in on who is the hero of the Christian faith. And uh, we need to glorify him as this choir and these singers have been singing to the glory of Christ. But now we've got to put Sunday's singing into Monday's living. We have to, we have to not only sing about him, but we may, must make sure that our very focus is in on Jesus. We are constantly going up and down because we are constantly picking out a hero other than Jesus. And when we wake up in the morning, our heroes are headlining the papers where they have fallen by the wayside. And then we droop along and we get down in the dumps. A whole lot of people are set up in churches because they thought the pastor was the Christ and they found out he wasn't the Christ. They found out he was saved by the same grace they were saved by and kept by the same grave and forgiven by the same grave. So here they all now down in spirit because they found the pastor is a meat man, a graveyard traveler, going to death and will stand in the judgment just like the people he preaches to. <laughs> There's no special heaven for him. There's no special place in heaven other than being a faithful servant. Amen. 
but we put our trust in him and then when he shows that he's not perfect then we're down in the dumps well now you shouldn't have put your trust in him in the first place you should admire him but adore Christ and don't get the two confused you must walk the fine line of adoration and admiration. It's all right to admire me, but don't, don't start thinking that I'm something beside a human being that's saved by grace. A whole lot of preachers have messed us up on that because they have said that I've got special powers and special gifts. Nothing special about you but the grace of God anointing you to do a special task. Then we look around and get some singers and uh, we make them our adoration rather than our admiration. And then God knocks them over and they crash. Then we're down in the dumps again. Amen. Because we thought they were going to be our model. And then we pick out special evangelists. A little while ago, it was my friend Jimmy Swigert. Everybody was listening to Jimmy. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. And he's a wonderful person. He's one of my personal brothers. Brothers. I was down there preaching for him last year because I thought enough people were hitting him. I thought he needed somebody to go down there and take a few licks. And so I went down there and took a few licks. But there wasn't nothing wrong with Jimmy that wasn't wrong with him in the first place. And that is, he's another saved by the grace of God. He's, he's all right. He's, gonna be, he's covered by God's grace. He's, if, if God doesn't have enough grace to save him, you better watch out for your salvation. Say amen. Same God to save you will hold him. Yeah. Amen. And then all of a sudden we were all upset about uh, Jim and Tammy Baker. They were the heroes and the Lord let something slip over there. And then we're down again. Well, I want to present one tonight that you'll never wake up and find out that he has fallen. Uh, he won't fall. And he won't fail. And the reason these others are falling is God is displeased when we put the spotlight on anybody but Jesus. Jesus is the only one worthy of our emulation and adoration. Now admire me and honor me and be kind to me, but don't get me mixed up with your God. As I said this morning, if your husband likes green dresses, please wear them. If your husband likes cornbread, please cook it. If your husband likes your hair parted, please part it. But if he messes with your God, then that's where you got to tell him to stop. Cornbread, yes. Dress, yes. But my God, I got to put my trust in my God myself. Have I with me? Can't nobody mess with my God. If you start messing with my God, then you got to go. I, I, I'd rather have Jesus than the prettiest woman in town. I, I'd rather have Jesus than the most able man in town. I'd rather have Jesus because Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth can pass away, but Jesus never fails. He is all and all to me. He's the one in whom I live, I move, and I have my being. He's the first one that I utter when I rise in the morning. The first word out of my mouth is, even before I answer the telephone, I got to thank him that I'm able to answer the telephone. And so I've got to utter Jesus. Sweet to name. He's the last thing at night. Before I close my eyes, I've got to say, Jesus, thank you for taking care of me. Jesus, thank you for trying, guiding me around these dangerous streets with dangerous people holding me in the palm of your hand. All of our adoration goes to Jesus. Now why do we adore him so? Why do we hold him in such high esteem? Why can't nobody else take his place? Father divine came through here, but he didn't take his place. He's gone. 
Daddy Grace came through here. He's gone. Prophet Jones came through here. He's gone. The others will go. But Jesus remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Have I witness in the room? Now, why? is he so uh, such a great God? Well, first of all, Paul said here, he is God. Jesus is God. He wasn't just a good man. He wasn't just a prophet. He been in the form of God. He is God. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, my Savior is God. Help me somebody. because of how low I was, because of how far down I was, it took a God to save a wretch like me. But thank God, Jesus is God. He is the second of the Godhead of the Blessed Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the one who is the creator God. Ain't nothing made that he didn't make. And without him, nothing was made. Say bless his name. I'm talking about Jesus now. When I call his name, it ought to do something for you. Jesus. I said Jesus. Jesus. My savior is God. Have I got a witness? But now look at here. He thought it not robbery. He thought it not unfair that he would give up his position in glory for 33 years in glory where the angels sang holy. I said holy. In glory where no sin is found. In glory with all power in his hand. In glory When he saw us on our way to hell, he said, prepare me a body. And he didn't think of his position. He didn't try to hold on to his heavenly place. He came down to save a wretch like me and thought it not robbery. He thought it not unfair. He thought it not unjust. He gave up what he had so I could have what he has. Ain't he all right? Because he came. I am born again. Because he came. I have been forgiven. Because he came. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Because he came. Do you really know him? Come on, say Jesus. In the morning, Jesus. In the afternoon, Jesus. Late at night, Jesus. The door of the church is open. 
and maybe somebody here this night you don't know him as Lord and Savior you ought to get up from where y'all right now in the balcony on the main floor man woman boy girl hallelujah Is there one? Just slip out of that seat, come right onto the aisle, make your way down. And make a declaration that you want Jesus. The old folk used to say, if you got him, you got enough. And he Somebody ought to come on tonight and know him. 